Good morning and welcome to worship today on September 1st. Can you believe it's September already? I can't believe it. It's also a communion Sunday and so I want to make sure that you grab your elements as we get started. And it is also the start of a new worship series, Wesley and Rooted. So I am very excited to hear what Pastor Charlie has to say today. Uh, as always, there are a few things that we can get going in the service. Make sure that you utilize the attendance pad and just let us know that you are here. Utilize the chat to let us know um, just a way that we can be praying for you or just to interact with each other. And then also make sure that you include any prayer requests that you might have so that we can be praying for you in real time, but also throughout the week as well. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Rachel. And we always begin every worship service together, reminding ourselves that we do not worship alone. Not only are we together, but the presence of the Lord is with us. And we symbolize that by lighting a candle because Jesus is the light of the world who came into a dark world and filled it with light. And so that same light is what is welcomed here in this space, the light of Christ. Similarly, Jesus brought peace into chaos, and so I tell each and every one of you that I pray that the peace of our Lord will be with you this day. And also with you. Thank you. Look at the sky and I wonder why, or how or who you are. Could there really be someone up there, out there, around me, who died for me? Who I want to believe, Lord help me believe, help my unbelief when those hard times roll in. In a world like this, in a life like mine, with so much going on, going wrong all the time, could I see a little light to pour into my endless night? Tell me things will be alright. Cause I wanna believe. Oh, help me believe. Help my And then I wandered aimlessly, all searching for a guide, but only you can provide. And then I made so many mistakes in this life, I know, forgive me. And I try, I try, I try, I try. church. We affirm our faith every single Sunday because we want to remind ourselves of the things that we affirm that we believe. So will you join me as we affirm our faith today? You'll find the words on the screen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, 
who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi, everybody. In today's scripture reading, we're going to be hearing from Psalm 119. And we're going to hear how God's word lights our path. It's a lamp that guides us on our journey in life. No matter the difficulties, the challenges, or temptations we face to make bad choices, God is with us on our journey. And we can turn to the Bible to help us, to show us the way on our path in life. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to learn from the Bible so it lights our path in life. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. And now we're going to find out how we can live out our calling a memorial with just three things. Now, if you didn't know already, Memorial was recently named the best of the best church by the readers of the news leader for 2024. Awesome, right? And that's a really nice compliment about the work we do in our community and how we help love show up as a church family. And I also think it's a reflection of our amazing programming for young people, grades 6 through 12, and their impact on our community as well. Justin Ramondi, our director of youth ministry, is really special and has done a fabulous job invigorating and inspiring our youth here at Memorial. And he has just put out a new fall calendar of activities, connection, and learning opportunities sure to keep our youth engaged and growing. Be sure to check out the new calendar at mumconline.com slash youth. It shows service opportunities, breakfasts, retreats, small groups, and more. And parents of youth, there is a meeting coming up just for you. Come and join Justin and the youth volunteers on Sunday, September 22nd at 7 p.m. in the multipurpose room. Come and learn about the upcoming events, the ski trip, confirmation, and so much more. And there'll be a notary on hand that night to sign all those medical release forms you have to fill out each fall. So parents of youth, be sure to save that date, September 22nd at 7 p.m. And go and download that youth calendar at mumconline.com slash youth. Now, it takes many volunteers and our greater church family to help support Justin and this amazing youth group. And I have an easy way that you and your small group can help. Each Sunday, our youth gather for a time of learning and growing and also share a meal together. These meals are provided by you, by volunteers and small groups in our church. And it's easy. Justin has created a sign-up sheet where you can sign up yourself or your group to a certain Sunday, like a pasta night, taco night, sub night. There's so many more. He even has pointers on the sign-up list for how you can order the whole meal or make it yourself. This helps simplify the whole process for you and your group, and our youth get the food they enjoy. You can visit mumconline.com slash youth to find the link to sign up, where you can pick your Sunday based on the meal that's needed. All the instructions are there as well. Friends, this is such an easy way for us to support our youth program and nurture our young people by filling their bellies just before Justin can feed their hearts and souls with the word of God. Again, visit mumconline.com slash youth for the sign-up link or see Justin with questions. And speaking of meals, we have another potluck coming up soon, and it's our annual tailgate potluck. Put on your favorite team's jersey, whether it be American football, European football, hockey, baseball, basketball, or cricket, or whatever is your favorite. 
Bring a dish to share, a side, a veggie, a dessert, or maybe even one of your favorite tailgate finger foods and join us Sunday, September 15th at 12, 15 p.m. in Maxwell Hall. Remember, Memorial supplies the main meat and drinks and y'all bring the rest. So pick your favorite dish, find your favorite jersey, and join us Sunday, September 15th at 12.15 in Maxwell Hall for some yummy food, good conversation, and connection with others in our church family. Supporting our youth as they begin another season of growth, fun, and fellowship. Helping to nurture their bodies through meals on Sunday nights and getting ready for food and fun through our next potluck tailgate edition. These are just three things that you can do to live your calling through Memorial. Friends, we come now to a time of tithes and offerings in our service, and uh, and we really just want to celebrate some wins as we do that, and, and the wins that your gifts help us enjoy and celebrate along the way. So this time of year, I think it's always good for us just to stop and, and remember that as the kids went back to school a few weeks ago, we actually get back into class here at Memorial as well. I'm celebrating that our classes are up and running again. We have a, a new members class going with Pastor Rich putting a class together on Wednesday night. I've got a class going on Wednesday night. We had 20 people there last night. And we have a number of other classes and opportunities to connect through groups and, and meetings and studies all the way through the week. And we can only do all of this. We can only have all of these classes, have those resources because of the gifts that you bring. When we gather together like that, as we will discover in this series of sermons that we're entering into, we grow in our faith. We put the roots of our lives deeply down into Christ. And that's what it is to be a United Methodist. So we celebrate that win today. And we are grateful for the gifts that you give that make it possible. So as we bring our gifts today, we do so knowing and understanding that they matter and that they make a difference in our lives together here in this local church and in other local churches too. So let's give joyfully and generously as we bring our gifts now to the Lord. Let us pray together. And gracious God, we do give thanks for all that you do in our lives, for all that you have given in our lives, that you call us to be a part of your great work in and through and beyond the church. And so as we bring our gifts today, would you receive them? Would you bless them? Would you put them to great use for the building of your kingdom and for the glorifying of your name? We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, family and friends of Memorial. As we continue our worship today, it is time that we go to the Lord in prayer. So I ask you, invite you, put aside all your cares, your worries, just be real, be still, and come to the Lord with all the things that are weighing heavy on your heart or all the things for which you are grateful. Good morning, oh God, King of the universe and author of love. As we enter your holy presence, Lord, we do so with hearts filled with both awe and wonder that you created us in your image and gave us the priceless gift of full and eternal life. When the universe was shrouded in darkness and chaos, you said, let there be light. From that mysterious moment, you chose to give the universe light and love and brought order into chaos. You created life in all its beautiful, amazing, and diverse forms, and set into motion the laws of physics that regulate the machinations of the universe. In your wisdom and mysterious ways, O oh God, you chose not to eliminate chaos and the random nature of things throughout the universe. In so doing, you have shown us how to live despite the chaos surrounding us. And in the wonder of who you are, you chose to show us how to live and love, even when the randomness and chaos of this world frighten and threaten us. You inspired others to give us your word through your precepts and laws. 
and the living example of how to live in love by becoming one of us as Jesus, the one who has shown us the way, the truth, and the life that leads to love and peace despite our circumstances. But God, the noise, darkness, and evil and chaos often distracts, confuses, and blinds us to the wisdom of your ways. Will you help us to remember that you have given us what we need to navigate even the darkest and most violent of life's stormy seas? So please help us to see that your word is the light before our feet that illuminates the path we are to follow that leads to love, full life, and peace. And will you remind us that your laws do not bind us, but free us to follow Jesus without fear? And this gift of prayer gives us assurance that even when it seems you are far from us, you hear our every thought. Ask us to wait patiently and often answer us in unexpected ways. Help us to return again and again to the wisdom of your life laws for us that we, we may, with joy and abandon and free from fear, care for the sick among us, feed, clothe, and house your sheep and your lambs, and visit in prison even those who have broken yours and human laws. Help us to see too, God, that forgiving others frees us from the tyranny and poison of unforgiveness. With our thanks, please hear us in all the unspoken things within us as we pray in one voice, as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 119, verses 97 through 112. Hear now the word of God. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it's always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your degrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statues forever to the end. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Friends, I had a little bit of trouble during this week. My back went into spasm on Monday morning first thing and, and that really knocked me out for a few days, which in turn knocked back a lot of my sermon preparation for this service. So I'm really thankful to my friend and colleague, McGray de Vega, who had written a sermon for use in this series that we're starting today. Yes, this is the first Sunday in a new series of sermons called Wesleyan Rooted that is going to take us all the way through to the end of September. Now, Wesleyan Rooted is actually the brainchild of our bishop, Tom Berlin. When he arrived in Florida back in January 2023, he started to tour his way around our conference meeting church families and clergy, and generally getting a feel for our conference area. And as he did so, he made an observation. He was meeting lots of great people in United Methodist churches, people of deep belief in Jesus Christ and in the good news of the gospel, people who were practicing Christian faith to the very best of their ability. And of course, he celebrated that then, and he celebrates it to this day, the richness of that faith that he found. But as he interacted with folks, he also noticed that many of these people who were members of the United Methodist Churches just didn't seem to be able to articulate much of what it is to be a United Methodist follower of Jesus Christ, or why that matters. I mean, yes. It's very true that across the spectrum of Christian faith, there is much more that unites us with Christians of other denominational backgrounds than there is that separates us from them. But that never means that as United Methodists, we don't have our own distinctive approach to the Christian faith. There are things that are important in our tradition, things that we believe help us understand the gospel more deeply and practice it more fully. And we believe that these things are very, very important today, as important as they ever have been in our world. So in response to this observation, Bishop Berlin at this year's annual conference asked every local church in our conference to preach a series of sermons this fall that would help the people called United Methodist in Florida to understand a little bit more about our tradition, to be inspired by it. And given that pumpkin spice is now back on the menu at Starbucks and we are therefore officially in fall, it's our time to preach that series. As we preach our way through it together, local churches across our annual conference will be focusing on five things that are important to United Methodists. Growing deeply, reading faithfully, loving actively, embracing widely, and serving impactfully. Over the coming weeks, we will be diving into each one in a way that is going to help us build a sense of who we are as United Methodists, why we do Christian faith the way we do it, and what difference we believe it makes in the world as we do so. So today, I get to start with the first one, growing deeply which is kind of funny in that Margaret and I would both tell you that growing things is not our thing. I mean, seriously, if you have ever given us a plant or if you ever try to give us a plant, we will both let you know right off the bat that nothing grows in our house. Our place is where the plants come to die. But that said, we're not talking about pot plants when we are thinking of growing deeply as United Methodists. We're talking about you and me, about people growing in grace as committed followers of Jesus Christ. And that is something that has been at the very heart of the Methodist tradition since its very beginning. Let me tell you some of the story of our beginnings, just in case you were not aware. The year is 1729. The location is Oxford in England, where Charles Wesley, one of the sons of a preacher man named Samuel Wesley, is attending university. Now, young Charles has grown up in the Christian faith and is committed to following Jesus Christ. At Oxford University, he meets several other Christians who share this sense of commitment to the Lord and, and they start to meet together around this shared desire to grow deeply in the faith. 
They gained such a reputation for their enthusiasm towards the Christian faith that by the time Charles's brother John joins the group, they have become known as the Holy Club, named such because of their intense commitment to spiritual practices. They shared communion together. They translated New Testament Greek. Ugh. They visited the sick. They uh, visited the imprisoned. Uh, and they sought inspiration from their study of scripture. When they started out meeting, they did so about once a week. But eventually, they had to gather more, ending up gathering daily every evening between 6 and 9 p.m. How does that sound to you? Their methodical approach to the Christian faith was mocked by those on the outside of the group. They would insult them, calling them the Methodists and some other names too. The godly men, the sacramentarians, the enthusiasts and the Bible moths. Initially, John Wesley did not appreciate this pejorative name, Methodists. He felt deeply insulted by it. But his brother Charles suggested that they ought to just own it and embrace its suggestion. To be a Methodist simply meant that they were Christians taking seriously the practice of their faith. I mean, what was wrong with being recognized for taking Bible study, care of the poor and the sick, worship, prayer and the sacraments? What was wrong with taking all those things seriously? Attending to these things was how these Methodists were growing in grace and in love for God and neighbor. These things were important in the life of faith, and the life of faith was of utmost importance to these young men who made up the Holy Club. Tending to the practices of the faith was exactly how they would grow deeply in the faith. I mean, that's what the New Testament vision for Christians in the church is, right? You'll remember from that series we just finished in Ephesians how we were invited by the writer of that letter to grow towards maturity in the faith, to grow towards the measure of our full stature in Christ. Friends, we cannot do that without growing deep roots into the faith. And we can only put those roots down by engaging in the practices of Christian faith, gathering for worship, Studying the scripture, prayer, receiving the sacraments, engaging in fellowship with other believers, showing up to serve those who need us most in our community and world. We also see this idea expressed in the psalm that we read together just a few minutes ago, where the psalmist says, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Where he goes on to say, I understand more than the aged, that's those who are a little bit older, for I keep your precepts. Or, as Eugene Peterson puts it, I've become wiser than the old sages simply by doing what you tell me to. The psalmist gets it. He understands that by practicing the faith, by being methodical, we grow in the faith. And the OG Methodists, the Wesley brothers, along with all the other members of the Holy Club, they got that too. If they wanted to grow in the faith, if they wanted to be rooted and grounded in love, if they wanted to be wiser in the faith than the old sages, which they did, they had to practice it on the daily. And that's what they did. And boy, did they grow in their faith. But that never meant that they would not be tested again and their faith not become strained, not by a long shot. Fast forward a few years and the Wesley boys have graduated from Oxford. They are ordained as priests in the Church of England and they've signed up to go on a mission trip to that little colony to the southwest of Ireland, America, where they spend 28 eventful months just a couple of hours up the road from us here in Fernandina in the Savannah area. On their outbound trip, the ship they were sailing on encountered a wild ocean storm that almost sunk them. John Wesley was frightened for his life and he realized that he was totally afraid of dying. However, he had seen some other Christians from the Moravian tradition on that same ship and they had not been frightened by the storm at all. In fact, they appeared to have a stronger, deeper faith than John did himself. 
And the mission trip ultimately was an abject failure on many, many fronts. And as John Wesley got on the boat to head home, he was deeply distressed and he was on the verge of giving it all up, of ditching his Christian faith. On January 24th, 1738, he wrote these words in his journal. I went to America to convert the Indians, but oh, who shall convert me? Who? What is he that will deliver me from this evil heart of unbelief? I have a fair summer religion. I can talk well, nay, and believe myself while no danger is near. But let death look me in the face, and my spirit is troubled. Nor can I say to die is gain. Later on that same month, he wrote these words in his journal. By the most infallible of proofs, inward feeling, I am convinced, number one, of unbelief, having no such faith in Christ as will prevent my heart from being troubled, which it could not be if I believed in God and rightly believed also in him. Friends, even John Wesley, the celebrated founder of our Methodist movement, the committed member of the Holy Club at Oxford University, the zealous man of faith, even he had stretches of time and experience when his faith felt weak. But he never stopped engaging in the practices of Christianity that had become part of his rhythm back in those early university days. He kept on praying, kept on reading scripture, worshiping and receiving the sacraments. He kept on showing up to Bible study and that was ultimately to be significant. After returning from Georgia, John Wesley met a man called Peter Bowler, who just happened to be a Moravian bishop. That's right, those same Moravians that had been so impressively faith-filled on Wesley's outbound ship to America. He asked Bowler what he should do about this crisis of faith that he was having. I mean, should he continue to preach? How could he when he was having such inner struggles and, and feelings of spiritual emptiness? Bowler said that he should continue to preach. But what can I preach? asked Wesley. Preach faith until you have it. And then, because you have it, you will preach faith. This was a reminder for John Wesley of something that he had actually known all along. Practicing the faith is never about checking off a list of things that just have to be done because we are Christian. They are not the end in themselves. Rather, the practices of the faith are the means to an end. That end being a deeply rooted, mature, vibrant, sustaining Christian faith. Or, as my friend and colleague McGray de Vega puts it, we don't do spiritual practices in order to be saved. We do spiritual practices because we are saved by faith. And then we do spiritual practices to be strengthened in our faith. This insight kept John Wesley practicing the faith. And it was not long until he experienced a profound encouragement as a result. On May 24th, 1738, Wesley showed up at a meeting of Christians at Aldersgate Street in London where he heard a sermon based upon Martin Luther's preface to the book of Romans. Afterwards, later on that night, as he ruminated on what he had heard, Wesley had a profound and deep experience of assurance that God loved him with an everlasting and unbreakable love, and that in this love of God, he could find rest. He famously wrote in his journal that night that his heart had been strangely warmed. And all of this happened because John Wesley did not stop practicing the faith. Even when he doubted its reality most, he practiced the faith until he had strong faith. Friends, we are all called, all of the time, to practice the faith. And it is by practicing the faith, even when we are struggling to make sense of it all, that we put our roots deeper into Christ. And we grow a mature, assured, transforming and sustaining faith. These things matter to us as United Methodists because we still hold to the truth that growing deeply in Christ happens by practicing the faith in our life together. 
We develop strength and faith by meeting together for worship, by studying together, by being in connection and service with one another. In doing so, we receive encouragement from one another. We are challenged in conversation and study. We are changed by our care for the needs of those who need us most in the world. And in it all, Christ meets with us by the power of the Spirit and does the work of transforming us from the inside out. So let me ask you a few questions today. How are you growing in the faith? How are your practices of Christian faith going in your life? Have you forgotten some of them? Or knowingly left some of them behind at some point, thinking that that you're just going to be okay in your faith? My friends, to be a United Methodist Christian is to let our lives and faith grow and be shaped by the method or practices of the faith. So if your Christian faith has been a little bit stale recently, or if you have been tested in recent days and and you find yourself experiencing some doubt, I say to you that maybe it's time to re-engage the practices of faith. Or, as Bishop Bowler of the Moravians might have put it, practice the faith until you have it. And then, because you have it, you can practice faith deeply. May it be so in your life and in mine. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have an opportunity now, wherever you are in the world, with me right here in our sanctuary, to engage in one of those practices of the faith. As we gather around the Lord's table and celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, this sacrament was one given to us by Christ himself who gathered with his friends on the night on which one of them actually let him down, gathering around a meal table. And in the course of that evening, he took a piece of bread. He gave thanks for the bread and he broke it and he gave it out to his friends saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. The scripture tells us that in the same way that night after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks for what was in it and he shared it out among those friends who were there, saying, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And ever since that night, we have gathered in moments like this to remember Christ, to remember his call to grow deeply in the faith, to remember that he himself, by the power of his spirit, which he has given to us, is the source of our growth in the faith. And dare I say it today, to remember that that growth in the faith, that deep growth happens when we do things just like this. So wherever you are in the world today, I hope you hear the invitation that Christ has extended to all of us to gather around this table and to partake of these elements and to enjoy this sacrament as a means of drawing closer to Christ. So wherever you are, I hope that that you have some elements in front of you. And I invite you to take a piece of that bread, to hold it for a second and be reminded that this represents Christ's body, given for you and for the world, so that we might know new life and growing deep faith in the one who's sharing this meal with us. This is the body of Christ that was given for you. Take now and eat in remembrance of him. And now I invite you to take the juice that you have at home. Just to hold it for a second. As I remind you that this does represent Christ's blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So that we might not be stuck in the things that are holding us back. So that we might be set free from them and that we might walk forward with Christ and grow deeply in this faith in the power and strength 
of Christ's Spirit. So friends, wherever you are in the world today, however you're feeling in your journey of faith, hear these words. This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Take and drink now in remembrance of him. Let us pray together. And gracious God, we thank you that you call us to grow deeply in this faith, that you have given us the practices by which we can do that, one of which being this sacrament which we've just shared, and we thank you for it. And may these gifts that we have received today call us forward so that we might continue our journeys with you, growing deeply in this Christian faith. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, at the end of our service, we always, or at the end of the sermon, we always have a couple of questions just to help us piece it all together. So here are a couple of questions to help you reflect. I mentioned them through the sermon and, and you just, they're going to come up on screen now so you can reflect them. And that brings our service to a close today, friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, for joining us in this moment. Uh, we do not take it lightly that you are part of our digital congregation. And we invite you to come back and worship again with us next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We'll be right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you are in the area, in Fernandina Beach on Amelia Island, we invite you to come and join us in person. We have three in-person services. The first one is at 8 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. Then we meet in Maxwell Hall at 9.30 for our second service. The third one is back here in the sanctuary for our 11 o'clock service. We will be continuing our Wesleyan Rooted series that has been started today. I hope that we've whet your appetite and you come back hungry for more next week. In the meantime, would you receive this benediction? Beloved children of God, go forth today as those who are called to put deep roots down into the faith and to grow in the faith. Go as those who have been called to practice the Christian faith as the means of that growth. And as you do so, go in the peace and the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.